Welcome back, everyone, to CIS 125. Once again, I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. As a reminder, the class is being recorded for playback. As such, you don't need to, you're not required to turn on your webcam or microphone if you don't wish. So um, the today's slightly different. I was planning on, of course, having an in-person plus recorded Zoom um, lecture as, as is the plan for the summer. But unexpectedly, I have something that is going to, uh, would be cutting in the middle of the class. Uh, so I thought instead of having everyone come in person and then disrupting the class, we'll just do it on Zoom. And it's not going to be a very complicated thing. I don't think it's going to be too too long and such what I need to talk about. Uh, I'll probably pass on the Zoom powers over to one of the assistants when they all get here, they can volunteer because it'll be, I've got a little bit of stuff to say, and then it'll be mostly like, well, if you want to stay and work, if you've got the software, you can work on it. If you want to ask questions, you can ask questions. It's not going to be a big sort of lecture that I was planning on, but it's not gonna really affect the class in the general aspect of things. So on, on a question of a few things. So if we didn't have in person a Wednesday lecture, Will that affect the assignments and such? I have to say no, simply because of the very short nature of the of the summer, right? Part one is officially four weeks long, and then there's a part two. So I can't really change the deadlines on things, even though we're not having a full lecture today. The, the, the deadlines will still be the deadlines. But what I will do is uh, there will be no penalty for any late work. If it affects you that we didn't have an in-person Wednesday, I had promised last time Wednesday was also going to be lab time to work, but if it affects you that we didn't have an in-person Wednesday, contact me via the inbox. Don't say it on the chat at the moment, uh, but contact me on the inbox here on Canvas It will if it will affect you that we didn't have the Wednesday meeting because not everyone's got the software at home and maybe they haven't mailed you the software and so forth. And I don't want anyone to fall behind. So the deadlines will still be these deadlines. Both of the assignments will be due this week. Um, I apologize. Yes, that we don't have it in person. But if it's going to affect you, I will take the late work. There will not be any penalty. But you need to contact me and let me know via the inbox that missing a Wednesday in person will affect you. Again, send it on my inbox so that I have it there as a record for the class. Don't just say it in the chat. That's different. You want to send me an inbox message. If it doesn't affect you, then no worries. Do the, do the work at home and submit it by the deadlines and you'll be fine. So does that make sense for these two assignments, for these two deadlines? Any questions for the moment, either on the chat or the microphone? Any questions so far before moving on? Yes, no in the chat. All right, so if any questions pop up, put them in the chat box. I will answer it that way. All right, so here's what I wanted to, to, to talk about. Um, the uh, second assignment is the, is a, so I'll reiterate the assignment briefly and then say a few more aspects. So the second assignment of the week is also your original character focused on some model sheets. Uh, I showed model sheets on the first day of class. I've got a few more to show. And so for this particular assignment, you're going to post and reply. So it'll be a public assignment. You'll all see each other's work. You're required to do one turnaround model sheet and then two of any other type from these six. There are other types of model sheets that exist out there, like maybe for an environment. But for the assignment, you have these six to choose from. And you'll see several times throughout the semester, there are chances for you to be as creative as you want. And there are also requirements that should be followed. And that mimics oftentimes working in, in the real world or in a company or in, in a team or whatever, that there's the back and forth of rigidity and creativity. And so whenever there is some of this rigidity, I do ask that you follow the, the details of, of, of the assignment and such. And then where there's aspects to be creative, of course, be as creative as you want. Because oftentimes in a job environment, uh, there is that, that something has to be done a certain way, but then there's other leeway. So you do have to do a turnaround model sheet. And then from there, choose two more of any of the other ones. Don't do three turnarounds. You do one turnaround and then two more of any of these other ones. 
and I was going to show it actually, I, I forgot to show it in class. So I will show that right now, actually, because you have to upload them as PNG files. Well, how do I, how do I create PNG? So this will be very easy. I'll show it right now as I turn on animate, but you're going to create three model sheets. You can do them all in one file, or you can do them in separate files. They all need to be exported or converted into PNGs. I'll show you that right now. And then they're going to be uploaded to Canvas. So when this starts up, I'll show you. Also, don't forget to do this part. People oftentimes just upload the pictures and then don't get full credit because they forget this part here where it's tell us a little bit about the character. This is also a very open-ended part. You have to do the part about telling us about your character, but it's very open. You can tell us, you know, one sentence, fine. You can tell us one paragraph. You can have the whole life story of the character and the idea that you have and everything, anything you want. But you do have to tell us a little bit about the character. You have three model sheets. One is required. The two are up to you. And so then just to show you here, when you have project file, we talked about creating um, layers. Maybe if you want on one file, you can create all of the three model sheets. You do have to do something special if you do it that way. And I'll show you in a moment. Uh, so let's say I have one layer called turnaround, turn around, and then another layer of expressions. And then what's the third one? Poses. So let's say I have three layers for the three. So in your character is say a werewolf and has two forms. Can we do two turnarounds? Um, no, it'd be the same sort of thing where in terms of uh, one type of model sheet, because I want you to get experience in the different types of model sheets. So that one character can be in various model sheets. And if they transform I guess what you could do in one model sheet, you could do the human version and the werewolf version turnarounds in the one file, but it wouldn't be two turnarounds to turn in, you know? So let's say I've got the three layers here, turnaround expression and pose. And then on one, I've got my amazing character right here. Here's the front side of the character. Here's the side of the character. Here's the uh, backside of the character. I'm drawing it left-handed. I've been practicing using my left hand, so this looks pretty good, right? So I've got one, and then um, I hide that one, I lock that one, and then I go to expressions, and then on expressions, I should probably switch to my right hand. That's not a circle. But we've got um, various expressions. Obviously, you're going to do way better than me, but you get an expression model sheet and then the poses. So lock that layer, hide that layer. And um, so we have exp we have uh, poses. So here's the one where they are triumphant. Here's the one where they are, um, I don't know, body slamming someone or a uh, pile driving someone. And then uh, here's where they're flying off back to their home world. <laughs> so we have poses, expressions, turnarounds. Well, on each of these, the they all exist in one file. And I could call this, you know, your last name. Don't type last name, your last name. Uh, week two model, whatever I asked you to call it in the assignment. And what I want to do is, well, each one of these three is in a separate file. I want to export all three into one file. So what you have to do is just hiding and locking the layer is not enough. Um, animate is kind of dumb. It's going to export all three layers at once, even though I'm only seeing one layer. So you kind of have to change the type of layer so that it doesn't, so that it isn't exportable. And this, then you do this by right-clicking the other layer, properties, 
you change it into a guide, invisible. And so see how the icon changes. And then the other layer as well, change that to a guide. So basically the layer, the model sheet that you're trying to export, that's the one that is going to be a normal, regular visible layer. The other ones, you're going to turn them into guides, right? Click properties, select guide. Then when you go to file export, it will not um, export all three at once and look like gibberish. Now you can avoid this extra step if you create a different file for every type of model sheet. You can do it that way. You then don't have to worry about uh, converting your layers to guides. Um, each one is its own file. So I'll show you both ways, but three um, model sheets in one file. The other ones have to be turned into guides before you go to export image. This will give you a screen here where you can set a bunch of settings. And the setting that you want up on the top right corner, name preset. You want to choose uh, PNG, ping 24. There's a bunch of types of files it can create. GIFs, JPEGs, and pings. But we want ping 24. Either will work, but ping 24 is better. It's got better quality. And you probably don't want a transparent background or else your background will be invisible and that might look weird. So probably don't want transparency. So ping 24, no transparency, dimensions as per the assignment. And I, I can see from the preview, it's only going to export one of my layers. That's what I want. So I would save that, uh, you know, call that model turn. Then I do the same for the next layers. Okay, I'm done with the turnaround. I'm gonna hide that one. I'm gonna right click properties turn it into a guide. I'm going to go to my expressions, show that one, right-click properties, turn it into a normal visible layer, type normal. All right, that's what I'm going to export. So file export image. It should remember your last settings, but if it doesn't remember ping 24, no transparency. There we go. It's only going to show the expressions. Save that one as whatever dash expressions. And then the last one, hide that one, turn it into a guide. Unhide that one, turn it into a normal layer. File export, export image, ping 24. No transparency, give it a name. And so I've got the three files that I just lost. And I, I saved them somewhere. Where did I save them? Pay attention to where you save your stuff. Oops, I saved it in the other folder. Okay. Um, over here. So you have the um, you have the three files, the three PNG files, the three ping files. Each one of these three you're going to then in Canvas create your reply. And you've got a spot where you can write about the character. And you've got an icon up here to upload the image, images. You can upload all three at once, no, one at a time. So start with the turnaround, you know, write that this is turnaround. Etc. In the same post, you can then upload 
there's also an attach here, but that's not as good. Just um, use the icon up here because you're, you're going to be writing the text about your character anyway. And within the text here, it'd be better. If you attach it, it's going to, it's, it, people will not be able to see your picture right away until they click download. So just make it easier on everyone, your classmates and me who is greeting you um, by just attaching it up here as an uploaded image. It's easy like that. And just write a little bit. Oh, since I might as well am here, I might as well just do it as well. And I'll say, my character is known as the one. The one. Uh, they are the most strongest character in the universe, etc. And I'll write a very cool story there later on. Um, little doc, little biography. So here's an example. You write a little bit about them. You upload your three pictures. You attach them as I showed you there. That'll be the assignment part one. Part two of it, of course, is you need to rep reply to classmates. You can reply to mine if you want, that'd be fun, but you will get credit when you reply to classmates. So make sure you reply to your classmates. What did you like about their character? What could be some improvement about their character? Remember respectfully, I worked very hard on this as you saw, so respect my art and um, respond to uh, two classmates. At least you can do more if you want. Uh, and remember, I'm not your classmate. So if you respond to me, that's nice, but you have to respond to your classmates. And uh, the, the way I did it here is all model sheets are in one file. And obviously the other way to do it is if you have a separate file, you create a file for every type of model sheet then you don't have to jump around the hoops of uh, showing and hiding your layers. They're just in separate files. So any way you want to do that to create your model sheets. I recommend you look at the examples. I'll show a couple. But within this week, I have a file here, model sheet examples. Download that file if you want. I'll show it right now. But in there, it'll give you some ideas. I put them in six different folders because it's six different model sheets. And it's just a bunch of different characters and a bunch of different ways these were done. They're not all necessarily, the, none of these are from previous semesters, actually. These are just model sheets that I borrowed from the internet. And just to kind of show you uh, a variety of characters, look at this little cute Cthulhu here, and um, you know, human characters and furry characters and animal characters and just different ways they've done it. Uh, there's the three poses is the most common one at least. Right? How does it look straight at you? How does it look at an angle? Maybe three quarter view. How does it look in those three poses? Um, back side, front side, three quarter view, left side, et cetera. Um, designing characters, possibly. I have a little note there. Let me look at it on the side here, as I mentioned here. So this one's cool. Again, this one's done in markers or, or Copic pens or something. So um, this is just examples. They're not all done in um, in in our class, but it's just um, it's just um, more examples to see. Then we've got expressions. So I've got a few expressions that you can look at. So this one's got expressions, but it's also full body and an outfit and everything and and. Um, Lots of expressions here focused on the character face. There's some Woody Woodpecker ripoff over here. Cool goth character. Well, you also kind of have to, sh you kind of show a little bit on the back. I suppose the expression of the hair, uh, maybe movement, not exactly an expression, but that's interesting to also add here when the character moves, the, char the hair bounces in a certain way. Uh, here's interesting. Here's an interesting one where, all right, what about sim relatively simple shapes where, okay, these human characters, they, they have a lot more detail, but what about some sort of robotic character where it's a cylindrical character and just simple eyes? You can definitely still do uh, model sheets or uh, expressions in this type of character. It's really going to focus on the eyes, of course, 
Uh, you can be very expressive with just eyes, even though everything else of the character doesn't change. Although, you know, tilting the head and such also adds to the expression. Poses. This one's a lot. Um, they even they even noted here, this is a technique that you often see in model sheets as well. Uh, the character is designed based on the number of heads. Many times in all types of animation, uh, a character is designed by the unit of its head. This is a four head tall character, right? The head is one unit, upper body, lower body, legs. It all fits on four. So when you animate the character, when you put it in a game and it is a consistent character, if it fits within the boundaries of four heads, that's a, that's a pro technique for designing a character. Now, obviously there can be exaggeration and depending on the character, if it's an anime character, a Western character, it's a furry character, a human character, there's just a bunch of leeway and creativity that you can do in, in, in art and animation. But this is a nice technique here of having the, uh, having the, um, the heads. This one's got various expressions or um, poses as well. The kod kodad, the knife, knife expert. Here's another one. This one's a five tall, five heads tall. So compared to the other character would be taller than the other character. Various poses plus expressions. You can you often mix these together a little bit. Try to keep them a bit more separate. If this is a um, pose model sheet, just focus on poses, even though this one also has expressions here and there. It, it'll kind of be easier on you if you focus on one particular type of model sheet rather than incorporating everything into one. And you you do need to create three separate ones, of course. Um, but if you might have an expression on one, that's okay. But you know, focus on that it's more a particular type of model sheet. Here we have running, front side, jumping. They are reflexive. They are heroic. They are laughing. Various um, poses. Color model sheets. This one's a very popular one that people do. You have one drawing of your character or multiple if you want, but you've got one drawing of the character. And then what are the colors that make up the character? You can put in as just simple dots of color. But a lot of what people do a lot is also note what, where the color goes. So we have the neck tie, the neck bow tie is this purple. The dress trim is this green. The bodice is this uh, lavender. Whenever you do, whenever you need white, well, you just make a little circle that white is there. People also um, put color formulas. Uh, I don't have any example with color formulas, but. I've shown a couple of those before. And so here's the colors. Here's a couple of drawings of the character. Here's where the colors work. You this character, Willow. Here's this character. There's the shade of the sword. Sometimes people do it this way in that all the shades of a particular part of the character are grouped together. So it would be nice if they were labeled. But for example, here, here's the color of the belt, the gold of the belt plus those accent marks. Uh, here's some colors of the main fur and such. Here's some colors of the armor. Uh, where do these, where are these? Okay, these are the, the boots. Now where's that pink? I guess the nose, really small nose. So we've got those extra colors there. So that's kind of a nice way to do it. If you group your colors that way, whereas this one, oh, here's all the colors. Grouped colors is nice. Uh, these don't have any of the example of the color formula, but if you want to do the color formula, you can do it this way. So let's say on mine, I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this color plus this color plus this color as my colors for my character. Well, let's say you're also jumping around and doing different things. Okay. So what color did I use? Well, you can use, I said previously, the eyedropper tool. You can use the eyedropper to click on a color. Then either from the color on the tool, 
or if you're looking at the window colors panel, you can click on the color and it tells you the formula. This one is 0066CC. And if you're looking at the color, if you're looking at the color uh, color panel here, it also tells you there it's 0066CC because even if it's off by one digit, that's a, that's a different color. It looks almost exactly the same, but it's just 1% different and animate will see it as two different colors. So after I found out what my, what my color formula is, I can just type it as, as a little bit of text. What did I say it was? 0066CC. Then my other color here, what is this one? Clicking on it, looking at my colors. This one is 339900. So this is the very open-ended part. I need a color. Uh, if you're gonna do a color model sheet, do a color model sheet. The details of it are very open-ended and do you just wanna put little swatches? Do you want to name the colors? Like this is over here, the, you know, blue eyes, that's not very readable, but the blue eyes of the character are the blue eyes of the character are there and the color formula 66FF not very readable but uh that's me doing the color model sheet aspect. One thing that I kind of like to recommend is even though the document by default is a white document, like a sheet of paper, I kind of recommend changing your color. If you, if you click select and just click your background and then set your stage color to anything else, just like a light gray maybe instead of pure white, maybe a light gray. That way you can see contrast better. When, uh, when I wrote that, it was very hard to see on a white background. So if you change it to a different color, like an off-white, that might be... Um, a little bit easier to see what you drew. Like right here, I accidentally drew with a white brush. And when the background was white, I never saw it. But when you change your background color to anything else, then you see all your details, your contrast. Now we have a couple of videos noted here by the assistants about possibly nice, useful designing characters. Yeah, they, they, seem, they seem good. Go ahead and put that publicly, uh, publicly there on the chat. We're going to put a, a link there in the chat in a moment about uh, tips for, for kind of animation and characters and such. Yeah, you can put them in the chat. All right, so what else? A uh, couple more of these descriptions. So with the description model sheet, again, they can be as elaborate as you want. You can have one aspect of the character and then a bunch of text, a bunch of text explaining the character. This one goes in about, uh, okay, the top of the hair is here, the eyes appear here, ears end up a little bit above the eyebrow ending point. All right, so it's important that when I draw the ear, it's a little bit above that point of the eyebrow. Mouth width is the same distance between the eyes. So there's a space up between the eyes and then the mouth is that long. And this is also a classic technique of animation to, to make a character more human-like usually, but a human character often is wide enough that they have the width of an eye, the width of an eye, and in between is also the width of an eye. So all of these, all of this width in between all here is the same amount. And a common technique is based on the, the width of the eyes, it also affects the width of the nose and the width of the mouth. Now, this is more for human characters, for cartoony characters and anime characters, slightly different rules. But that's why I'm also showing this variety of 
model sheets to kind of also show you here's how different people have done it. This one's a kind of a fun description here. Enough hair on head to lose a badger in it. So that's a fun way to describe that the character's got a lot of hair. The character is four foot something. Angry eyes drawn on the shoes with magic marker. So they have some cool shoes and they drew some angry eyes. Uh, when they walk, they're usually dragging their feet. Here's the colors. Hair is a brownish orange. The shirt is gray and dark gray. Pants are black or dark blue and the shoes are dark gray and white. The eyes are blue of the little drawing, uh, but they're normally not seen. So little description on that one. Now this one is in Portuguese. Anyone know any Portuguese? Um, personagem principal, posi. So this is the principal, uh, the primary principal. Caristicas humanas a presentando poderes. Yeah, I don't know Portuguese. I can fake it. But uh, here we see that some description on um, some description about the character plus a turnaround as well. It's kind of interesting to see them. Oh, okay, when they're on that and the, when they're in that position, the sun rays are kind of an interesting flat thing. Whereas from the front, it looks like it's got more dimension. And um, this is that. And here's a very detailed one. So they also mixed in the um, color model sheet. They did it as little stars, plus the name, plus the formula. That's cool. Then they explained a lot about the character, a moody, unpredictable shapeshifter who currently resides in the form of a dragon. Colors over here, a couple poses, personality, and you know everything about does not breathe fire. Any fire magic is cast with hands or by the kitsune wife. So lots of detail, lots of possibilities in um, this assignment. Very open-ended creative assignment. There is some requirements and rigidity here and there. Make sure you follow those. But besides that, it's a very open-ended assignment. Here's the comparison. This is one of the most ambitious ones. People usually don't do this one because it requires that you have a bunch of ideas of a bunch of characters. And so you've got the one character, you've got Jorge over here, you've got the prime minister over here, and you've got the opposition leader over here. So comparatively, the prime minister is tiny and... You know, co the common man George is tall, and then the other political guy is this height. Here's these characters. We have Lowenstein as this little mech, plus the main characters, and Sylvia is the tallest one, and Daryl and Corinne are these heights. So this is the most complicated one. I would recommend that if you work on the other ones, within the time period that we have, you should be able to do it. If you try this one, this is one of the most complicated ones because it's got all the characters and heights and all of that. And so just another way to do it. So all of these examples are in Canvas in the week two resources. You can download them and compare them for yourself. Model sheet examples, that's downloadable. And that's the second assignment create some cool characters, upload the files, tell us a little bit about them. Both, both assignments are due Sunday. Again, it would have been nice to have it in person. I got to get going in just a moment too. But uh, if we were in person, you'd be able to work and have the lab and everything. So apologies on that. I'm going to, uh, I need to get going, but I'm going to pass the hosting power over to one of the assistants who would like to volunteer, assistants, one of you can volunteer. I will pass the hosting power over to them. Um, all of you students, you can stay if you want. You can work. You can ask questions. You can, um, you know, turn in the first assignment or whatever. You can stay as much as you want. Um, if, if you're planning on not staying, however, just say, just say, I'm here in the chat just to kind of take attendance. Uh, you can do that right now if you want everyone here. Just say, I'm here for the attendance. And if people want to stay, go ahead and stay. If you want to head off and do things on your own, that's fine. Uh, the assistants will be here as long as, as long as they want, or as long as you want. If you have questions, if no one asks questions, then things will wrap up. But I've got to get going for this thing. And again, these two assignments, can't wait to check them out. 
I know all of you are creative in various ways, and it's very cool and exciting when I teach this class because I get to see all your creativity. I haven't finished grading the first assignment. It's still on my pile of stuff to grade. So as long as you turned in the first assignment, I will grade it. But I'm just going through all of the submissions. I'm teaching this class plus another class. And then next week, I start teaching another class. So my stuff adds up. But as long as you turn stuff in, it will be graded. So general questions before I leave, before I leave the power to the assistants. Any questions? All right, Angela, let me give you the host power right there. If people come in, you can let them in. And again, for everyone, uh, stay and um, work if you want. And actually, wait a minute, let me take the power back so I can stop the recorder. And then we'll just kind of work.